Welcome back. This is going to be a um, video on sizing through an engineered process here for the Uniform Plumbing Code, it's Appendix A. Uh, we, we take volume, we take velocity, uh, distance, friction loss, all of this stuff, and we figure out and calculate the size of the system based on that. So I'm going to show you the steps it takes, what's necessary for us to know prior to doing these steps. So this form that's being shown on the screen right now is one that I give the class in normal circumstances. Before sizing the main water supply from the meter to the building, and that's all we're going to do today, you can use this same method for sizing the branch lines inside the building. You can do all of it based on this method. <clears throat> but like I said, we're only going to be doing the water supply from the meter to the building today. These are the things that need to be known prior to starting. The minimum street pressure provided. So we always go off minimum street pressure. You never go off of the maximum because maximum fluctuates. You always want the least amount of water available to us to size to that parameter. The pressure goes up, great. You know, We have to go off of what's the least available. Size of the meter provided is always something that we need to know because we're going to take that meter size and calculate pressure loss, okay? Um, the, the goal for this is to calculate in one of the steps what the available pressure is that we're gonna use. So yeah, I said the minimum street pressure, but you lose pressure going through the meter. You lose pressure going through a backflow preventer. You lose pressure going through a pressure regulator. You lose pressure in elevation you lose pressure in distance. So all of these pressures you lose, and what we have to do is calculate what's left over after losing all of this pressure and take what's left and figure out how much pressure is available for friction loss in lineal footage. And then we can base that off of, off of a chart on, okay, well, this amount of water can get lost, so it must be this size pipe. I can't use this size because I'm going to lose too much. It's going to be too much friction loss, blah, 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 blah. You'll, you'll get a feel for it as we go on in the explanations. Uh, okay, so the size of the meter, like I said, we're, we need to know that because we're going to lose pressure going through it. We also need a total fixture unit count, so we need to know what that is. The minimum pressure required at the highest fixture, this one here, Every fixture operates at a minimum allowable pressure. And if that's a requirement at the highest fixture, that means that we need to have that. So if it's being used at this highest point, we can't use it in our calculations because it's already being used, okay? Uh, total elevation from the meter to the highest fixture. We need to know the elevation because, like I said, you lose pressure in elevation. Total developed length of piping from the meter to the furthest fixture, that's distance. Now, that's the furthest fixture, not the highest, the furthest. A lot of times, the furthest fixture will be the highest fixture, but you never know, okay? Um, that being said, the furthest fixture in total developed length, like I said, distance, you lose pressure. Um, it's see the next one on the list is type of material used for the system. If you use copper, it's a smooth, smooth inner lining. If you use galvanized, it's not. It's a rougher pipe. It's a rougher uh, interior lining. So the friction loss changes. Brass piping, everything changes based on the type of tubing or piping you use as far as your friction loss. So we have to know which chart to use with that material. And then also the use of either a tank style or flush valve style water closet. The flush valve is the flushometer, the one that you see in most commercial buildings. So those are all the things that we need to know. Once we know all of that, it's now possible to properly size your water system uh, through the engineered method or Appendix A of the, 20, uh, the uh, 2018 plumbing code book. Okay. Now, before we get into the steps, so here, here are the steps, okay? Those are your steps. I wanna show you what I got set up here as an example. 
So here's each step, gallons per minute calculation, pressure loss through the meter, pressure loss and elevation, total pressure available for friction loss, available friction loss in, pre in PSI per 100 feet, and then you get the size of the main. So it's a six, six step process. Here is a list of everything that I've, we've talked about already that I went ahead and did as an example, okay? So we're gonna use this in conjunction with these steps, okay? And you also have our charts. This is chart A103.11, okay? And that comes into play right here. Obtain the demand in gallons per minute using your total fixture units and chart A10311 or chart A10312. So we are trying to obtain our gallons per minute because all we have right now is our total fixture unit value. So this is chart A10311. And this is chart A10312. The difference between these two, here, let's do this. Okay. So the difference between these two is you have a fixed unit value, which is right here. Hold on. One second. Ah, we'll just stick with this. We're fine. So we have a fixed unit value of up to 250. So fixed units are down here. Right? So those are your fixed units. We can only go up to 250 fixed units on this. And you have two, two lines here, line one and line two. You go to chart A10311, it tells you that line one is for flushometer valves and line two is for flush tanks, which means the requirement in fixture units for line one, which is flushometer valves, the requirement in fixture unit, value, in, in fixture unit load, uh, gallons per minute, is higher when using a flushometer valve as opposed to using a regular standard flush tank water closet, okay? So at 250, which is this last line right here, okay, at 250 fixture units, the demand in gallons per minute for a flushometer type water closet is 100 GPM, okay? So that's a 100 GPM. And then the standard falls just under what? Is that 74? roughly 74 gallons per minute, because it's just under 75. But we are looking at, for ours, oh, hang on one second. Yeah, that was the, that was the right one. No, 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 strike that, this is it. Got to use the right buttons here. Our total fixture unit count is 1,100. So we have 1,100 fixture units right there, okay? So at 1100 fixture units, that will give us, and right here, can't use that chart. So we're gonna use chart A10311. And at 1100, right here, right? 13, 14, see each one of these is 50 fixture units, okay? So we come all the way up. Now you see how graph one and two have converged into the same, because once you get up past a certain amount of fixture units, the, the difference is so minimal, it doesn't matter. So here we have 220, because I believe this right across here is our intersection point. So at 1100 fixture units, we come up and then we shoot all the way across. And we end up with 220 <laughs> it's not easy drawing with this when you're thumb 220 fixed uh, gallons per minute g p uh, i'm having a blast i'm having fun with this okay 220 gallons per minute which means we go over to this and our gallons per minute calculation right here, we're gonna go ahead and write 220 G 
GPM. So now that we know our gallons per minute, we're going to go back to our steps. So we've established this part right here, okay? Gallons per minute, total fixed unit value, blah, 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 blah. Now we're going to obtain our PSI loss or pressure loss through the meter using gallons per minute, which was found in step one. And we're going to use chart A102.2. So we go back to our charts and we go up to chart A102.2. And we have our flow in gallons per minute of 220, which is roughly right about there. And we go straight up until we hit four. So you see this right here, this line right here, that's your four inch meter. And that four inch meter goes all the way back to your pressure loss. So going through a four inch meter at 220 gallons per minute will yield five pounds of pressure loss. So we go over here and you have your pressure loss through the meter. We have a pressure loss of five PSI. You guys with me so far? Hopefully. Now keep in mind, remember, this is a video, so you can always go back and double check and check and check, you know, figure out, okay, how did he get gallons per minute? How did he get his pressure loss of the meter? You can always do that. That's what it's for. Uh, now we have a pressure loss in elevation. So let's go check out the steps for that. Now we take our pressure loss in elevation. This is how we obtain it. Uh, let's see, blah, blah, blah. multiply the distance or the elevation distance by 0.43. Every foot in elevation, you lose a 0.43 PSI. You don't lose 0.5 like we learned in chapter six, it's 0.43. That is the actual, that's the realistic number, okay? So we wanna get as close as possible. We wanna be exact with this because again, it is an engineering method and uh, engineers are very precise. They have to be. So we take our elevation loss, which is, what is it? Elevation from the meter to the highest fixture, 54 feet. So we have 54 feet, okay? So we're gonna take our 54, might as well do it here on, here on this piece of paper here. So we take our 54, we're gonna multiply it by 0.43, okay? This page is going to have a lot of uh, a lot of calculations on it, with, especially with these over here. So 54 times 0.43, that's going to be 12 and 16 and 16 and 21. So that's going to be 2, 2, 3, 2. 23.22 PSI. So we're losing 23.22 pounds of pressure, just in elevation alone, we're losing that much, okay? Uh, step four says total pressure available for friction loss. So how do we figure that one out? Well, let's see what we got. We wanna go to this one. Nope, we wanna go to this one. There we go. Step four, obtain your total available PSI for friction loss by doing the following. Subtract steps two, three, and the pressure required at the highest fixture, which was provided, okay? And you subtract that from your minimum available PSI at the street. So we're gonna take steps two, steps three, and the PSI required at the highest fixture. We're gonna subtract that from our minimum available pressure. All of that was given here. So we have minimum street pressure of 64 PSI. We're gonna subtract. 5 PSI, 23.22 PSI, and your minimum pressure required at the highest fixture, which is 15 PSI. So we're gonna take this and this, okay? And we're also gonna subtract these two over here. So let's just do this. Let's add uh, five and 23 is what, 28? 
So we got 28.22 and we're going to add 15 to that. So we'll add 15. And that's what eight and five is 13. So that's three, that's four. So I have a total of 43.22 that I'm going to, I'm going to be subtracting the 28.22 is this and this added together. So this plus this is 28.22, okay? And then we add that up and we get that, and then we have our 64. And we're gonna subtract 43.22. This is gonna give us what? Uh, what is that, uh, 80, 78? And that's going to be a zero. And that is going to be what? Six minus four is two. So a 20.78 PSI. That is our total pressure, which is available for friction loss. So we're going to put 20.78. The reason why this here is what we have available is because, like I said, and this is just a review here, we are losing pressure and elevation. So that 64 PSI that's coming from the street, well, 23.22 of it is pressure just to get up to that high point, okay? We are gonna lose 15, okay, this 15 right here. We're gonna lose that in the required pressure at that highest fixture. So this high pressure, this, this, this fixture right there, I need 15 pounds, okay? So I can't use that in my calculations of what I'm going to, to to need for size, because it's already being used. Okay, so that's being taken away. Plus, I'm losing five pounds through the meter. So, I mean, really, in all actuality, just past the meter, I'm not at 64 anymore. I'm at 59 PSI going into the building. Okay, so this is what I have left available. This is how I'm gonna size out the rest of my system based on this pressure, because in order for all of this to happen, I have to make sure there's enough here through friction loss, okay? So it's, it's friction loss we're looking at now, okay? As the piping's going, as the, the water's going through the piping, it's losing pressure. If I lose more than this, I'm never going to make it up to here. And I'm never going to have that 15 pounds of pressure at that high point because I've lost everything through friction loss. That's how we size. That's why we size based on friction loss. Let's move on to step five. Available friction loss in pressure per 100 feet. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking this and we're going to base it on every 100 feet. Okay, every 100 feet of this system. And my total developed length from the meter to the first fixture is 519 feet. So what I have to do is figure out how much this pressure is going to be per foot of our system. And then once I figure that out and I get my available friction loss per foot of, of the system we have, I'm gonna multiply that by 100. I'm gonna multiply it by 100 because if, if I don't, the chart that we use for this is gonna be this, just this huge room size chart. We have to sit there and multiply it by 100 to bring the chart down to something a little more manageable, something we can actually see, okay? So that's why we're doing this per 100 feet. So let's go ahead and take a quick gander here at uh, step number five. And let's go ahead and get rid of these highlights. There we go. Step five, right there. Obtain the available pressure for friction loss per 100 feet by doing the following. Take the total pressure available for friction loss, which was from, from step four, right? Divide that by the total developed length, which is provided. So I got to divide that by the total developed length. And that'll give me the, the available PSI for friction loss per foot. In order to get the PSI of friction loss for 100 feet, you just multiply that number by 100. So let's take the number from step four and let's divide that by our total developed length. So here, and this is this is the part that this is the part that kind of sucks because I have to go long division for you all, and I should just use a calculator. Actually, you know what? This is a good opportunity to show you guys how this works and what you should use. Okay. 
So here, here's a material estimator. Now this one's like 50 bucks or whatever, but they, they have other, they have other um, calculators that are $20 that are a little bit less uh, detailed than this. So, but the cool thing about this is you can do your feet and inches, right? Um, let's say, let, let's just say as an example, five feet, four and a half, see, five foot, four and a half inches. And then I can sit there and go, well, shoot, I'm doing a 45 degree offset or something. So I can multiply that by 1.414, which is the constant for 45 degree angles. And I did, I did a quick little um, video on that, you know, and, and where 1.414 came from. It's like three minutes long or something. It's, it's in the, it's in the, the, the cache of videos that I've done. So anyways, then you get a total result of seven foot seven and three sixteenths. So this thing does distance, it does all kinds of stuff. It's a really cool calculator. I highly recommend that you get one of these um, material estimators or any kind of uh, uh, construction calculator. If you don't have it on here, you can always get one on your phone. Um, they, they have the app for this and it's fantastic. We're gonna use this for just basic math here. So we have friction loss of 20.78. So we're gonna go 20.78 and then we're gonna divide that Okay, by 519 feet, because that's my total developed length from the meter to the furthest fixture, 519. So we divide that by 519 and you get 0 0.04, which is way more than enough for us to figure out. So we have a 0 0.04 and the 0039 is so minuscule, it does not matter. So you have available friction loss, Per 100 feet. So we'll just say that uh, 20.78 uh, divided by 519 is equal to 0 0.04. Now we're doing it every 100 feet because this, we took this, we divided it by 519. So every single one of those 519 feet, I can lose 0 0.04 psi in friction loss. Okay but I want it every 100 feet. So I take this and I multiply it by 100 and you end up with four. So we can lose available friction loss, four PSI, okay? Now we're ready to go ahead and size the main line. This is the one where everybody takes a look at this, this chart and just absolutely loses it. And they go, oh my God, this chart's freaking insane. Um, it's not really that bad. It, it's actually pretty easy once you get the understanding on what you're looking at. Um, let's do this. Where can we go? Here we go. Oh, wait, I can actually do that. Zoom out a little bit, a little more. Uh, that should be good. First off, we're using chart A105.11 because we are using copper. See, type of material, copper, right? So that's what we're doing. Now take a look at this, velocity. Our velocity is eight feet per second, okay? Copper lines, you're allowed to utilize eight feet per second on copper lines. The appendix says 10 feet per second, but Chapter six allows for eight feet per second, maximum on copper piping. So it's eight feet per second. That's what we're going off of. That's what we're gonna use because this and this are synonymous with each other. Has to be done, can't be done uh, any more than that. You can obviously lower your, uh, your velocity uh, from eight feet per second. You can drop it down to six feet per second. Um, and I'll show you what happens when you do something like that. This chart will explain a lot. So we have gallons per minute of what? What was our gallons per minute? Uh, step one up here, 220 gallons per minute, step one. So back to the chart, 220 puts us right, roughly right there. Okay, well, close enough, right? It's good for 220. Uh, that's our gallons per minute. What is our... Uh, what is our friction loss? Our friction loss is four. 
Okay. So this chart, the two sides are the easy part. Everybody understands that this is what it is. This is your friction loss every 100 feet, four pounds of pressure. And then everybody can take a look at this and go, okay, my gallons per minute is 220, right? Now, keep in mind, this is 220 gallons per minute because I have 1,100 fixture units. It's, just, it's a large building, okay? This is like a commercial building. This, let's see if I can make this line as straight as possible. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is beautifully straight. I like that. And then we have this line. Oh, come on, straighten out. Uh, that's good. Okay, check this out. These diagonal lines, these are the ones that kind of freak people out a little bit. Let's change the color of my pen. Okay. These diagonal lines, this is the diameter of your pipe. You see this diameter right here, six, five, four, three, blah, 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 all the way down, okay? So that's not that hard to figure out, okay? These lines signify size. Three inch, believe it or not, for three inch pipe, it goes from there to there. So there and there. That's your three inch, okay? So that's three inch pipe, not up above. That's not your three inch, okay? This is the top out, man. That's the height of your three inch. Past that line, you have to bump it up to four. Uh, I don't remember or recall seeing three and a half inch copper pipe. So that would be a four inch line. This, this diagonal line, that is your velocity. Okay, and we're talking eight feet per second, which is right here. Right there, that's eight feet per second. Okay. That eight foot per second, what is my friction loss here? A little over two. But what's my friction loss availability for 100 feet? I have four, okay? So, so I can lose four PSI every 100 feet, but at eight feet per second and 220 gallons per minute, I'm only losing a little over two PSI, which means this is gonna work out great. Now, if that red line was way over here, yeah, it isn't gonna cut it. We, we're gonna have to make some changes. We're gonna have to do some kind of shifting in order for it to work. So if this is here, it falls above this three inch line. So therefore, and it falls below that four inch line, right? So this is a four inch line, right in there. So if this is my four inch line, this is my three inch line, obviously everything in between here is going to be four inch. So that means the main line going into this building at eight feet per second, with a, with a street pressure of, what was it, 64 PSI, um, velocity 8 feet per second, 1,100 fixture units or 220 gallons per minute, total distance of what, 500 and 519? That means my main line is 4 inches. So it's a 4 inch main line. So that, in a nutshell, is pretty much the sizing parameters of everything you need to know. Um, the hardest part is this last chart, okay, and understanding this last chart. But like I said, once you calculate your friction loss in the head, your gallons per minute, you can go ahead and calculate your size of pipe. And you can do that inside the building on, on everything, okay? You, you have your pressures, you have your availabilities. The branch line is only going to be a portion of those fixture units. It's not going to be 1100, which is the main line. It's gonna be in that portion. So you can take the same steps and calculate those branches. Now check this out. I told you I was gonna tell you what was gonna happen 
when the velocity decreases. So if you decrease your velocity, now think about this for a second. If I decrease velocity and I still have to maintain my gallons per minute, okay, and I can take it, so uh, on a hot line, it was perfect, still in red. So on a hot line, I can go down to five feet per second. But if I was feeding out that much and I drop my velocity down to feed the hot, then it's over four inches. So in lowering your velocity, in order to maintain your flow in gallons per minute, you need to increase the size of your pipe. So you need a larger pipe to maintain at a lower velocity, okay? Now, like I said, the maximum available for copper is eight feet per second, but running hot, running a hot line, five. That being said, uh, watch this video over and over as many times as you possibly want. It's okay. Um, that's it, you're done. Uh, I hope you learned something, I really do. And um, I enjoyed explaining this to you. Please leave comments if you have any comments, if you have questions, I will try my hardest to explain them to you.